Hey guys, we are going to have a quick chat about the uh, Socrative quiz in today's video. So <clears throat> let's take a look at number one first. Uh, we're given these two values for our point charges. Uh, luckily, they are the same value, so um, that makes life a little bit easier. Uh, first charge is 8.7 uh, nanocoulombs, so we convert that to 10 to the 9 coulombs. And our radius is in millimeters, so we convert that as well. Notice that I did not bother to put this into proper scientific notation because it's just not really good use of time. <clears throat> uh, so then we use the equation for our data booklet for Coulomb's force, where force is equal to Coulomb's constant times our charge squared divided by radius squared. Uh, normally, these might be two different charges, but in this case, our charges are identical, conveniently. So that makes life a little bit easier. And here I've shown the substitution. And our final answer then is 2.6 newtons. Most students got this correct on the quiz. So well done. Um, some of you did not, so have a look. This, this is really fundamental, so you need to understand how to do this. Um, practice with your calculators if you need to. Um, these parentheses on the bottom of this fraction are really important for your calculator. Um, so make sure you include parentheses where needed. Okay, uh, number two. Calculate the total force on charge A to the correct number of sig significant figures. Uh, some of you received one mark for this for correctly calculating the magnitude but many of you did not receive both marks because you did not calculate the angle of your vector. Remember that a vector has two properties, both magnitude and direction, and if you don't have both properties, your answer is not complete. Okay, so uh, how do we handle this? First, I always recommend using a diagram when you're setting this up. Um, you know, after you practice a bit, you may or may not need to do it, but I, I would say just generally it's it's a good habit, um, especially in the beginning. So uh, this is a diagram of my system where I have points A, B, and C. Uh, points A, B, and C, uh, or sorry, A and B and B and C are separated by the same distance. So what we have here is an equilateral triangle, and that's how I got this 45 degree angle. Uh, in these two corners, which we'll come back to a little bit later. Um, one thing that is not given in the problem is the distance between point A and point C, and that is necessary to calculate um, the force of charge C. So we have to calculate that, and I've done that here using the Pythagorean theorem, and um, I didn't round it off using a calculator, I just gave the exact value there. <clears throat> Um, okay, the other thing that would be a good idea here after we draw a diagram of our system is to draw a diagram of our resultant vector. So that's what's going on here. So our resultant vector is given by force net. And again, I'm going um, tip to tail here. So I place vector C uh, at the tip of vector B. And then I draw my vector, my resultant vector from uh, tail to tip of this system, and I've chatted about this a bit already, so hopefully this is making sense to everyone. Okay, I've also shown uh, this angle here for vector C, 135 degrees. I just got that by adding uh, 45 degrees here to 90 degrees, so that gives me 135 degrees. Uh, we need that angle later as well. Okay, so that's step one, and now we've got everything set up. So we know the magnitude of our charges, uh, three microcoulombs. We know the distances that we need. Uh, now we can start calculating our forces. So we know that net force as a vector is equal to uh, the force of B plus the force of C, and these are all vectors, so I'll just throw that on there just for funsies. Okay, so... Uh, the force from B is just calculated by using the distance and the magnitude of the charge and plugging it into Coulomb's equation. And remember again, conveniently, our 
uh, charges have the same magnitude. So a uh, bit lucky there, simplifies our problem. And here we go. I've also shown the angle here. Instead of writing 180 degrees, I could have put a uh, negative sign here and that would be fine. Uh, we will talk about angles in a little more detail later. Uh, either way, it would have been okay. But since I've shown a positive value here, I'm going to leave my angle because this is a vector. Don't forget. Okay, um, so then we need to talk about the force of C. And here we use that distance that we calculated using the Pythagorean theorem. And again, the magnitude of the charge of C. Okay, um, and I've given the direction as well because it's a vector and you have to show both magnitude and direction for a vector. Okay, so my direction is 135 degrees. Okay, so that is step two. Now, um, step three, I need to calculate the X and Y components of my net force, okay? Um, the way that I do that is by adding up the X components of both my vectors. Uh, for vector uh, B, force, force B, uh, it is all horizontal force, so I don't need to isolate the X component. For vector C, however, I do need that uh, X component. So I'm going to need to use a cosine function, which you can see here. So here's the magnitude of vector um, force vector B. And here, again, I've, I've now used the negative sign um, rather than the 180 degrees. And when, again, we'll talk about angles in a second here. So uh, if you don't understand that at this moment, just be patient. Okay, uh, I then add up these two values uh, for my horizontal components, and I will get a total of 2.74 times 10 to the negative 2 newtons. Okay, so my my x value of vector force vector c is just its magnitude times uh, cosine of 135 degrees. Okay, we then repeat the process for uh, the vertical component of our net force. And in this case, it's just going to be equal to the vertical component of vector C, uh, which we can calculate using a sine function. So uh, we do that and we get 7.15 times 10 to the negative three Newtons. Uh, because this is actually at 135 degrees, the x and y components of vector c are going to be equal. So uh, if you calculated it separately here, you could have used that answer again down here. Okay, so then uh, for number four, we need to calculate the magnitude of net force. And the way that we do that is by taking the square root of our horizontal component squared plus our vertical component squared, Pythagorean's theorem, and when we plug those values into our calculators, we will get uh, 2.8 times 10 to the negative two Newtons. Again, most of you got this part correct. Okay, however, you did forget the angle. Uh, so we need to calculate our angle here. Um, angle beta, I have called it, okay? So angle beta is going to be equal to the tangent, the inverse tangent, or uh, arc tangent, if you prefer, of the y component divided by the x component, okay? So we plug those values in here and we get negative uh, 14.6 degrees, but this is a problem because negative 14.6 degrees will put our vector in the wrong quadrant. So I have called this vector, um, or this angle rather, beta prime, because in order to get the actual angle, we need to add 180 degrees to put it into uh, the correct position, okay? So when we do that, add 180 degrees to negative 14.6 degrees, we will get 165 degrees to three significant figures, okay? So that gives us our total vector, both components, direction and magnitude. There they are, 2.8 times 10 to the negative two newtons, at 165 degrees. Okay, so let's now chat about Cartesian coordinates. So here I have a Cartesian plane, and you can see 
uh, quadrant one, quadrant two, quadrant three, and quadrant four. And we know we're in each quadrant based on the values of our x and y components. So if both are positive, then we're going to be in quadrant one. If we have one negative x component, one positive y component, we're in quadrant two. If we have one negative component and a negative y component, we're in quadrant three. And quadrant four is given by a positive x component and a negative y component. Okay, um, so when we plug our values for x and y into our arctangent function, what we're going to find is that it could, <clears throat> uh, it will put us into either quadrant one or quadrant three. And the reason for that is pretty simple. It's because negative y divided by negative x is equal to y uh, divided by x, positive y divided by positive x. So, and that is because those negative values just cancel out. They're in a fraction. And remember, uh, we're multiplying by negative one there. Okay, so this is a problem. It means that if we put negative values for y and x into our calculator, we're always going to end up in quadrant one. Okay, so that's not cool. Okay, similarly for a negative y value and a positive x value or vice versa, we're always going to end up in quadrant two, okay? So any value we plug in is going to put us in quadrant two every time, okay? So not cool. Um, so what do we do? Well, um, the best thing to do is to draw a diagram so that you know which quadrant your vector should be in, okay? Um, if it should be in vector, sorry, if your vector should be in quadrant two or quadrant three, and you know that for sure, just add 180 degrees to the value that you pulled out of your calculator and you will get the correct answer. Okay. All right, for problem number three, uh, this is a very straightforward question. I don't think we need to dwell on it too long. Again, it is just the regular application of um, your data book at booklet formula. Okay, so the electric field is going to be given by Coulomb's constant times the charge divided by radius squared. And we have all that information from the problem. So your answer then is 3.83 times 10 to the 7 newtons per Coulomb. Most of you did get this correct with uh, a few exceptions. Okay, number four, uh, charge A is 31 nanocoulombs and charge B is 84 nanocoulombs. Uh, if you're not sure what to do with nano, these prefixes are in the beginning of your data booklet. Okay, so we need to set this problem up and I've drawn a diagram here. Uh, you may or may not have needed to do that, but um, our diagram says that at point P, our electric field is going to be equal to zero. So we have uh, point A, P, and B here. And I've also shown R, A, and R, B. And these are the distances from point A to point P and B to point P. Okay, so I know that my electric field is equal to zero, and I know that this is the formula for an electric field. So that is our starting point. And I showed the derivation for this up above. Um, this is not, I believe, in your data booklet, which is slightly problematic. You, you should definitely memorize this. Um, okay, so we're concerned with the magnitudes of uh, electric field A and electric field B. So because their sum is equal to zero, I've just equated them to each other. They're pointed in the opposite direction to each other, so... Um, you know, I could, I could work out the math algebraically, but it's not it's not great use of time. So just drop the negative sign here, is what I'm saying. Uh, <clears throat> so what you're going to do is equate these two equations, and then this is convenient. You can solve for distance A in terms of distance B, and so that's what's going on here. So uh, distance A is equal to 0 0.61, 
times distance b. Okay, just by equ equating them. Uh, remember as well that the one half, uh, whenever you see an exponent to one half, that means that this is a square root symbol. I just don't really like drawing square root symbols. Um, it's a personal hang up, I guess. Okay, uh, so from this point, we know that total distance is equal to the distance from A to P plus the distance from B to P. And we know that it's six millimeters or six times 10 to the three meters. Um, it, this is actually one time when you were asked to give your answer in millimeters. So this is not kind of not a useful step. Let's just get rid of that. Okay, there we go. Uh, so we then do a little bit of substitution here because we already solved for this value in terms of B. So we can just plug that in. And then we can add 0 0.61 times uh, r sub b plus r sub b, and that gives us 1.61 times r sub b. We divide both sides by 1.61, and we'll get 3.7 millimeters for the distance to b. It would have been more useful if I had actually um, solved for a previously, uh, or solved for b in terms of a. That That's one way you could eliminate this last step. So. Uh, R sub A then is going to be equal to 6.0 millimeters minus 3.7 mil millimeters, and you get 2.3 millimeters there. Okay, so that's it for number four. For number five, uh, this is the last one. You were asked to determine the electric field, and we have a hint here. It's a vector at point P if, if charge A is equal to 3. Uh, 30.0 microcoulombs and B is negative 60 microcoulombs and the distances uh, are given there as well. I don't, probably don't need to read them. Um, this problem mainly just combines a couple of things that we did previously. So here's a diagram. Um, in this case, we're a bit lucky in that none of our vectors are going to um, not be at right angles to each other. So this really simplifies uh, totaling up our vectors. So uh, we cal calculate the magnitude of each of those forces, and here they are, um, or rather force per charge, the electric field, and there the values are. And uh, we then can calculate the magnitude of our resultant field by taking those values and plugging them into the Pythagorean theorem. And we get 1.01 times 10 to the eight newtons per coulomb. And we can then find our angle and we will get 18.9 degrees. But when I look at my really bad diagram, I can see that I should not be in quadrant one I should be in quadrant three, okay? So that means I need to add 180 degrees. So uh, my final answer then will be 1.01 times 10 to the eight newtons per coulomb at 198.9 degrees. I noticed that some of you had values that were uh, a little bit off from this. And so I, I used the values that my calculator had calculated so this is the result of some rounding off. And if I don't round anything and just copy and paste the values in my calculator, then I get 1.14 times 10 to the 8 newtons per, per coulomb. So uh, this is the range of acceptable answers there. Uh, if you had a value where the exponent was off here, then I did not accept it. Okay, so that is it for the quiz, guys, plus a little bit of additional information. Uh, if you were struggling on vectors or vector addition at all, you should definitely get in touch.